let, let me just follow up on that. So with the issue of the linkage, you said there's absolutely no linkage, no comparison whatsoever. You dispute that the Palestinians are militarily occupied, that Israel has annexed Palestinian land. Do you dispute that? Do you dispute that they have forcibly removed populations? Do you dispute that? Do you have any other different kind of uh, information that could convince the world that you were speaking to that this these facts that you cited are in fact are not you know that's not what the Palestinians are experiencing. Say so we've we've spoken to the reality to the plight that I, I Palestinians know, I, face. I'm, sorry, Nick, and, I'm not talking about the, the plight and the reality and so on. You dispute that they are militarily occupied. We don't dispute that, and we've been clear about that. It is, a, that it is a historical fact that the West Bank that the West Bank has been occupied since 1967. Uh, our that is why the, at the center of our policy uh, is the recognition that only through a negotiated two-state solution can we achieve what Palestinians seek and what Israelis seek, and that is a reality in which Israelis and Palestinians enjoy equal levels uh, of these virtues of these elements, uh, security, prosperity, democracy, freedom, and dignity. That's, that's what a two-state solution can bring about. Just as we have acknowledged historical realities and realities on the ground, we've also acknowledged, uh, as did, uh, as have previous administrations, that we're not there yet, clearly, in terms of uh, a two-state solution, or even in terms of uh, creating a constructive atmosphere in which the two sides can sit down together and attempt to make progress uh, towards that reality of a two-state solution. Uh, that is why this administration, from the earliest days, uh, has focused on practical measures that can provide some benefit to the Palestinian uh, people. And you can measure uh, those practical measures in the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, verging on a billion dollars over the course of this administration in terms of humanitarian support to uh, the Palestinian people. It's why we have uh, maintained our sacrosanct commitment to Israel's security, uh, knowing that if Palestinians feel opportunity and Israelis feel security, those are conditions that can help galvanize uh, efforts to advance uh, a two-state reality. We're going to continue working on that. We're going to continue to set the stage so that we can ultimately seek to make progress. Okay, I tell you what, Palestinians appreciate all the help that the United States gives them, but they would appreciate more being free from occupation and controlling their own destiny. I want to ask you, you began by citing anniversaries and so on. You know, well, on October 26th, uh, all happened to be the first anniversary of the closure of six human rights organizations in Palestine. And you have not, I mean, your position remains mysterious. Nobody has understands it really. I mean, have you, 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 you said that you received their, their answers or that you were queries and so on, but we don't know. What is your position? Are you, you know, a year after this happened, are you calling them to reopen those? Or are you saying, now they are guilty of what the Israelis are accusing them of? Uh, Said we haven't uh, said either of those things. Uh, what we have said, and it, you're, why not? I mean, Ned, I'm sorry, but why not? It's been a year. Uh, Said we uh, have uh, spoken clearly about our position on this, uh, and our position is that human rights and the importance of civil society uh, is applicable in countries uh, and places around the world. Uh, Israel is no different. Uh, independent civil society organizations play an indispensable role uh, in reporting back and uh, offering facts and scrutinizing the records. And this, go, this goes to uh, the point I mentioned at the top of this briefing, that no country uh, should be or is immune from scrutiny. And I think our Israeli partners would agree with that. Uh, that's why we have always contended there must be an extraordinarily high bar uh, when it comes to taking action against independent civil society organizations. Uh, we want to see that bar protected. We want to see that bar preserved. The Israelis have told us uh, that they had uh, the requisite information to take the actions that they did. Uh, they have provided us in recent weeks with additional information. Uh, we are in the process of reviewing that, but this goes back to a point that we made in the days after. Um, this action was first announced a year ago. Uh, the United States does not 
have a relationship with these organizations. We've long considered the PFLP uh, a, a terrorist organization. Our relationship with these organizations is not what other countries and, and, and groups of countries uh, had or have today. Uh, so there is uh, no question about us um, severing a relationship. We never had one uh, to begin with. The principle that we think is important is that civil society plays an indispensable role, plays an indispensable role around the world. We want to see that role protected. Lastly, I'm sorry, lastly, uh, <laughs> why are you remaining silent on the increased violence that is being inflicted on the Palestinians as we speak? I mean, as we speak today, Naples is besieged, uh, Janin is besieged, Tulkarim is besieged, and so on. Israeli settlers uh, uh, attack Palestinians day in and day out. They burn crops, they burn trees, they attack civilians, destroy cars, and so on. Yeah. I've not seen a strong statement that you are condemning, for instance, condemning this uh, the, the settler violence against Palestinians. Uh, Said, I'm a, I'm a bit confused by the question because uh, I know I have uh, offered our alarm and deep concern. Uh, for the trends that we're seeing uh, in the West Bank and, and elsewhere. I believe the DOT has done the same in, in recent days. Uh, we've noted that the recent period has seen a, a sharp and, in fact, an alarming uh, increase in uh, both Palestinian and Israeli deaths and injuries, uh, including among uh, numerous children. Uh, since mid last month, uh, at least 23 Palestinians and four Israelis uh, have been killed. Uh, those numbers may have, uh, in fact, risen uh, even in recent days. There's one analysis out that uh, suggests that this year is the deadliest uh, for Palestinians in the West Bank uh, in nearly two decades. Uh, that is something that is of great concern. That but is yet you remain reluctant to condemn Israeli settler violence against the Palestinians. You have not mentioned. Uh, uh, set their violence against the Palestinians, even in your last statement. Uh, Said, we always take issue, we always condemn uh, violence against civilians, against innocent civilians. Uh, the fact of the matter is that we've seen an alarming increase in deaths on the part of Israelis and Palestinians. Some of this has been in the context and the conduct of security operations, but there's no question uh, that civilians uh, have been killed. That is always something that uh, is deeply uh, deeply concerning to us tomorrow.